Hi. Yeah, I wanted to update you on the last trip that I just came back from a couple weeks ago. Or maybe it's been a week. I went to Croatia for my friend Damir's birthday. And got the added bonus of seeing my other friend, Zvonimir, fly in the air show. He's a jet fighter pilot with the Croatian Air Force. Very good man. Very good friend. I stayed with him, actually. Um, he's opened up his house for ministry purposes. So every time I go to the capital city, I've been staying with him the last couple times. And and it's like a village near the capital city and it's almost like the village in the woman at the well story where Jesus told her that she had five husbands in John chapter 4 and then she went and told everybody that there was a prophet who knew everything and everybody got saved. And that verse actually was spoken over me. I can't even remember. And that's why it's important to keep track of words spoken prophetically over your life. But I remember this one because you know, they said, John chapter 4, the woman at the well story is going to be your story. And at the time, I thought it was the Lord's prophetic ability to, to, to know things and then speak them and have that impact. Um, but there was multi-layered um, prophecy there one that's what's happening in this village like I spoke over Zvondemir's life at a meeting last December I believe it was and and he was at the meeting only because he told me later that Valentino was angry with him for something, and he thought, well, I'll go to the meeting, and maybe she won't be so mad, or she'll forgive me sooner, because she always does, eventually, because she's an awesome lady. But he went to the meeting, and he said, while I was preaching, the whole time I was looking at him, and uh, so then at the end, of my speaking, the you know, I invited them to come forward to get prayed for for healing or words and and just before I stopped I said, you know, there's somebody here who's stuck and they need to get unstuck. And you know, and I was like, you know what I mean. You don't have to embarrass yourself, come forward, just Jump in line, and I'll pray for you with the rest of them, but make sure you come forward. And he felt I was speaking right to him. And so he did, and now, I mean, it was all in God's plan. You know, he was working on his heart and calling him into ministry. So now he's... He came with us to Holland, <clears throat> and he invites me to his house, and we do ministry like till 4 o'clock in the morning sometimes, but mostly, you know, 3 or 4 in the morning we're praying for people. They just keep coming. We'll go out during the day and minister maybe in homes or or just 
be out and about and we come back late and there's people waiting to get a word and to get prayed for and and then all day long we'll be sitting at the table out on the front porch and people will come and it's just amazing the people are so like they heard there's a prophet who can heal the sick and they they want to come and receive and the majority of them are Catholics and God loves everybody and and has a word for everyone like I just get out of the way and it's almost like I'm watching and in awe and disbelief of how amazing God is and what he's got to say to these people. And, you know, he backs it up with signs and wonders so they know it's from him. And Paul said, we didn't come with clever speech and convince you that our doctrines were true, but we came with demonstrations of power so that you would know that it was from God and not from man. And it is so true. <clears throat> like, right now, the, the peace that I'm filled with is demonstrable. You know, it's like, it's like money. I just put my hand on them and get out of the way and let God do the work. And... Sometimes people manifest, you know, or usually I see things and sometimes they manifest. And um, I had mentioned in a post that in Colombia I noticed that people were filled what looked like water and then that chapter 4 verse verses came back to me that you know she he said I have something for you to or if you knew who I was you'd ask me for water and if you drank from this water you'd never thirst again and he was filled with living water because it says in another verse those who believe in Jesus as the scriptures say out of their innermost being will flow streams of living water. And I believe that's what I'm seeing. But some people are drained down or not full all the way. And when I lay hands on them, I, I can see almost immediately how full they are. And, and then I learned to minister by pouring into them, and I can see the water level moving. It's very strange, but very effective and very helpful for me, because, you know, in the past I would put my hand on them, and the heat would come. And, and I would look to see what I see in the spirit and have words for them. And now it's, it's a little different. Like I was, I was praying for a guy, a friend, I won't name names, but he's, he's been through a lot in the church and was disillusioned and hurt by by someone that he trusted and when I prayed for him I saw it looked like a demolition project like inside of a house they tore the walls and the ceiling down but they didn't remove the furniture first it was just all piled on top of you know it was a big mess and when I said that he started, like, oh, and his stomach was churning 
to the point where you, if he lifted his shirt, you could see something under the skin moving. So I put my hand on it and tried to burn it out, but it didn't go. And then, so after the meeting, we, Zvondemir and I ministered to him privately. So we laid hands on him again and the thing is still manifesting from earlier. You know, it's doing flip-flops on the stomach and so I told it to leave like multiple times with with authority and and force and applied the heat and it just it wouldn't release and um finally after about 45 minutes then I prayed Lord what's the why is why are we having so much trouble with this one why won't it leave and I and I got the word on forgiveness and when I spoke that he started crying and he admitted that he had tried his best to forgive. But after a while, the other people's mocking of the person who hurt him became too much to resist. And then he joined the mockers and, and really liked it when people spoke evil of the guy who hurt him. And, you know, it just shifted over time. It wasn't, it was gradual, but he admitted that he had went from attempting to forgive and forget to open rebellion and slander and malice and with many tears and, and true repentance he he asked the Lord to forgive him for what he'd done and then they started coming out. It seemed to be four or five of them, I don't know what they were, rejection was one for sure, and murder probably, and I don't know, but they came out, and he got free, he's awesome, and he's free, and I love him so much. Because he's he's a good man, smart man, um, and he asked me to be a spiritual mentor to him, and of course I said yes. Because the kingdom needs men like him with his heart. If we're gonna, not if we're going to, because we're going to succeed and push this God's agenda forward so that the whole earth is covered with his glory and his kingdom will come in full manifestation, every knee bowing, every tongue confessing that Jesus is the Lord. That's what I believe. I no longer believe in uh, our Savior rapturing us and then the world going to hell and being destroyed I believe that already happened the things that were spoken of and mis misunderstood happened when the temple was destroyed in 70 AD and now we're we're seeing the the prophecies of Daniel coming forward where the enemy was defeated and disarmed. Some were left for a, for a time powerless yet influencing only in our minds. And uh, now we have a choice to make whether we partner with the thoughts that come from the darkness or the truth that comes from scripture and our own spirit.
his spirit that lives within us. We have to take every thought captive and stop partnering with demons, lying spirits, unclean spirits. Because when we agree with them, when we agree with the lie, we empower the liar. And we don't want to do that. Give him our power. Another person I prayed for when I was praying, the water level, you know, I saw it start to go up, but then suddenly I was looking at an ocean. And it was big waves, rolling waves, like on an ocean. And it was pretty awesome and different from what I'd seen before. But this time, a big storm came. Like the waves started chopping white caps. And, and then I looked to the right and the big dark clouds coming and you could see the rain falling like you do and I thought it was an interruption you know that the the storm was coming to to prevent what we were doing so I stilled the storm I told it to stop and go back and then all the waves got really calm you know it was effective but then I noticed on the surface of the water was an oil slick black oil and you know with the rainbow effect from the sun and glimmering off of it and then I asked the Lord how to get the oil slick you know how to deal with that I thought it was bad and needed to go just like the storm and he said well I sent the storm to get the oil slick off and you stopped it and I laughed, and so did the person I was ministering to, and then, then I called the storm back. <laughs> it was it was funny actually. And then the waves got bigger and started cresting and and smashing, and then the storm came. It passed. It went. And then the sun came out, and the the water calmed, and I could see that it was no longer covered with oil, but it had been clean. And then I was looking around because, you know, I wanted to see where it went, and I looked to the left, and then I noticed it looked like we were on, in Cancun out in the ocean off the shore. I could see the blue sky and the blue ocean and the sandy beaches. And then suddenly, umbrellas popped out of the sand like mushrooms. And then the heat from the sun came and just, just warmed us and and I knew that we were finished, and I looked at the water level inside of her, and she was full to the top, overflowing, and she had a big smile on her face, and so then we went out of the room where we were at, and I went to the, to the toilet, and I looked in the mirror, and actually my cheeks were kind of blood or sunburned, like they were reddish from from the sun and the spirit. It was I know this stuff sounds crazy, but it's true what happened. It's just God has a way and it's not our way. And it's it's hard to understand and believe, but he finds a way to get us what we need. Because he knows our every need. And he loves us so much. And I'm so grateful to him for that. Our father is an amazing, 
the song did an amazing job and is doing an amazing job and the Holy Spirit is guiding and leading us and that's cool um, I wanted to also mention some other things that happened uh, conversations we had um, there was a man who came and he was very I'll say religious but he was very Catholic and knew what he believed and believed it with his whole heart so he came to talk to the Protestant ministers you know that he heard that was in town and so the conversation started with you know what we disagree about and we were shocked not shocked we were wondering what he was going to say next and he said I believe that the Eucharist the communion becomes the Lord's body and the Lord's blood actually and the three of us that were ministering agreed with him we believe that and so he was kind of taken aback by that um, and he said, oh, well, also because you have so many factions within your, within your church, like 40,000 denominations, and Pastor Dahmer said, well, there's factions within the Catholic Church, too, just because there's factions don't mean that, that there's not truth as well. He said, yeah, but, but, but. So then Dax said to him that the big issue was the Holy Spirit and that we need to be filled with it. And and I said, Yeah, we just we wanna we wanna lay, we wanna pray for you, lay hands on you and see what God has for you and fill you with the Holy Spirit. And his first objection was, why do you have to pray for me? Because my wife prays for me every day and I pray for myself. Like, that should be sufficient. And we, you know, I allowed where, no, it's a little different. Because God has given us gifts and we can minister at a different level than personal prayer. And he said, and... I already have the Holy Spirit. And I, I was like, how did that happen? And he said that a bishop in the Catholic Church had prayed for him after he had done this and this and that when he was ready for that part. And he laid hands on him and prayed that he would receive the Holy Spirit. But he said, you know what? I don't didn't really do anything with it. He says, I feel like the ten lepers, and like I'm in the eight that went and never went back and thanked the Lord. He said, I never really did anything with the Holy Spirit. And I said, well, do you want that to change? Would you like to? And he said, yes, very much. So, so then he let me put my hands on him, and of course the peace of God came, and and I started praying for him. And I thank God for the bishop for doing his duty and ministering in grace to the to the parishioners and to the to this man in particular and he and I prayed for him and his family and his job and all that for wisdom and knowledge and discernment and grace and peace and joy. And when I was finished, 
He looked at me. He said, those are very nice words. He was very pleased. And then I asked him to pray for me. Not right then, but, you know, when he prays to remember me and lift me up in prayer to the Lord because, you know, we're active. We're doing this daily. daily. You know, we're ministering unto the Lord all over the world, speaking to people again and again. And I asked him to pray that we are correct in what we're saying and that what we're saying is helpful and that if we get off track, that he gets us back on track again. And he said, yes, he would pray for us, for me, because I asked him, but it's awesome to think, you know, a guy that came kind of apprehensively and a little antagonistically, not much, but, you know, he felt like it was us and them, and, but God united us through the, through his power and through his love, and that was that was amazing and I thank God for it um, I think that's about enough for right now I got more stories to tell from that trip and if I get a chance I'll post another video um, getting ready now to head up north with my brother Tony we're going to visit a friend my actually my ex-wife's brother moved to the Upper Peninsula, so we'd like to see where he's living so I know how to think of him, and then next weekend we're going down to the Indiana-Kentucky border, John and I, we're going to visit with some friends and minister one-on-one -on -one with the son of a friend who's amazing in his own right and needs healing and then before you know it the I'll be traveling back to Macedonia for the 50th, 30th cele year celebration of the planting of the church in Skopje the Christian Center 490 be there for four days and then travel to Holland or the Netherlands to minister with a new friend Nels Van Loon and his friends be there for a few days and then down to Germany a couple of big cities there two different churches and then Switzerland for a few days to visit Pastor Dahmer and hopefully he can come to Germany and hopefully his Vandermeer can come to the Netherlands with me. Um, I always like being with my friends and when they can travel and meet me, that's awesome. We can do things together. And then I'm working it out with the airlines, see if I can, my ticket back was from Bulgaria with a stop in Vienna, Austria, and it's actually closer to Vienna than to Bulgaria from where I'll end up at the end of the trip, so I'm going to see if I can change my flight and just jump on the second leg of it. They don't usually like to do that, but they changed the time of the takeoff of the first flight to an earlier time, and I, you know, it's like 5 o'clock in the morning, and that means I got to be there at 3, and I'm going to see if I can change it because of that. That would be helpful. And then we come back November 1st, so I'll be gone a couple of weeks. Thank, thank God Meg is a sender 
or an awesome letting me go and minister. Because she, she can see what God is doing. And it was hard in the beginning, but it's getting easier. And I'm growing and maturing, becoming a better man, a better husband, a better father. And she sees that, that God is at work. Like, I go and minister, but I, in the last 10 years, I've changed so much in my heart, in my mind, and how I deal with my own family. And I thank God for that. I, I just see that Christ in me, loving on them, and, and even they are commenting and receiving God's love through their father, through her husband. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that guides us. Thank you, Jesus, that you live inside of me and that you're ministering through me in in strategic ways, advancing the kingdom, your kingdom come, and your, the Father's will be done in, <laughs> here on the earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Lord. And I just pray for everyone who's listening right now that these videos are helpful, that they're encouraging. And I, and I do encourage you to step out in, in the sphere that you're in. You don't have to be like me, but just be Christ in you. Acknowledge that his presence is there always. And that you can tap into his heart, his mind, and live fully from that place. And I believe it will have an awesome impact on everyone around you. You don't have to go. I'm going. If God calls you to go, go. But if you're going to stay, stay in him or stay acknowledging him and, and his, what he's like and be like him because he's in you and whatever's not from him needs to go and, and we should be manifesting the the fruit of the spirit peace kindness joy long suffering all that is available the abundant life is available Jesus is inside of you and you have access to that reality through faith. Just believe. That's it. Just believe it. And, and act according to the truth. And you will be transformed. You have to be willing to change your mind, to renew your mind to this truth. And then the, the reality manifests effortlessly religion is about conforming like here's the rules do your best and here's what you do when you don't do your best and when Jesus comes back or the world will get raptured or whatever then everything will be put in order but we can put things in order now in this life and it'll look different for each one of you but it is it is true it's true in my life and i'm not that special i was obstinate and i even asked god for a new name one time and he gave me israel and i'm like huh, that's huge what's that you know what's the meaning behind that and it says, I looked it up, and it's the the one who fights with God. 
wrestles with God. And he even said that to me at one point. I had mentioned it in one of the other videos. When I asked him how long was this trial that I was going through going to go on? And he said, until you quit fighting with me. <laughs> and at that point, I was dedicated to being the best person I could be. So it didn't feel like I was fighting. I was cooperating with all my strength, with all my might. But that's the old covenant. The new covenant is to love your neighbor as yourself and to love others as he has loved us. And that's what I've been doing, trying to do. And I encourage you to, to do that as well. I love you. Thank you. And I'll talk to you soon.